The Sun Belt isn't one of the bigger conferences, and thus, the stadiums aren't huge. But there are some interesting ones in this conference, that's for sure. So with that being said, here are the Sun Belt College football stadiums. Starting off with Alan E. Paulson Stadium, home of the Georgia Southern Eagles. They call it the prettiest little stadium in America, a much more inviting nickname than Death Valley that a couple of other teams call their stadium. It definitely has some competition though, not just in America, but this conference as well. But it's quite pretty, there's plenty of greenery, every corner of the stadium has a grass berm, it has that sunken field design where the stands are built into the earth that a lot of smaller stadiums have. And I like it. Prettiest little stadium in America? Well, it's one of many, let's just say that. Brooks Stadium, home to the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers. I can tell by the logo that a Chanticleer is some sort of chicken, but it does sound like a toddler mispronouncing Santa Claus. There is something odd about this stadium, but I can't quite put my finger on it. Oh yes, it is of course the field. Look how close it is to the road, very strange. Other than that, it's quite normal. Now, joking aside, teal is a nice colour, and hats off to them. I've got no idea how they've got the grass to grow teal instead of green. That's a nice ballpark they've got as well. I see they've grown regular grass over there. Cajun Field, home of the Louisiana Raging Cajuns, which, if you get rid of the S at the end, definitely sounds like the name of a spicy chicken sandwich. This field is even further sunken into the ground than the first one, and it's actually below sea level. So, as you'd expect, the drainage has to be on point, otherwise its nickname the Swamp would become reality. Other than that, it's a fairly straightforward design. As always, I'm a fan of the grassy hill at one end. Also, given that it's Cajun Field, home of the Raging Cajuns, I'd assume that the food scene is pretty darn good. Centennial Bank Stadium, home to the Arkansas State Red Wolves. It's basically just a bigger version of l &E Paulson Stadium, but there are some slight differences. For starters, it's a little bigger. Double-decker stands on each side, uh, there are some red seats. Oh, and these pictures are a little out of date. This section has been upgraded and had luxury suites and all that sort of stuff added. The exterior is just bare concrete for the most part. And overall, the stadium's not bad, just nothing out of the ordinary. Something that definitely doesn't describe Centre Park Stadium, home to the Georgia State Panthers. Since its inception in 1996 as the host of the Atlanta Olympics, this stadium has gone through some drastic changes. It was designed to convert from the Olympic configuration into a baseball stadium, Turner Field. The Braves eventually moved out into the suburbs for some questionable reasons, and then Georgia State moved in, and transformed it into this Frankenstein's monster of a stadium. Having said that, I kinda like it. But there is a difference between looking at a stadium and visiting a stadium every other week. I should also mention that there's a decent view of the Atlanta skyline. Hancock Whitney Stadium, home to the South Alabama Jaguars. A brand new stadium. In fact, it was the only on-campus FBS stadium to open in 2020. It is fairly unique in college football given that one end is made up of a terrace with standing room only. This is done so it can be turned into a stage for concerts. By all accounts, it's a great little stadium to watch football, although very few people have actually had the chance to visit. Bobcat Stadium, home to the Texas State Bobcats. This one is vaguely similar to Hancock Whitney Stadium, but with the end cut off. You may have noticed that the end is round, well, that's because the field had an athletics track around it, which was only removed recently, in 2012, which was the same time the north end zone seating was expanded. It also has a more grandiose exterior than South Alabama's stadium, especially the main facade which looks quite nice. 
Although there's nothing mind-blowing about this place, it, it just seems like a nice well-rounded stadium. Malone Stadium, home of the Louisiana Monroe Warhawks. This one is quite unusual. As you can see, there is only seating on two sides of the field, which in itself isn't too far out of the ordinary. But I'm not sure I've ever seen taller seating on a two-sided stadium before. It just keeps going up, but I like it. I'd probably prefer to sit all the way up there than at ground level behind the end zone, so it makes sense. As a player, it must be quite strange. You look ahead and there's just a few trees. You look to the side and there's like 70 rows of seating. Other than that, there isn't too much to say. The exterior on each side is very bare bones. Kid Brewer Stadium. Hang on. I, I did hear that things were a little wild in the Appalachian Mountains, but they've got kids brewing the moonshine? Jeez Louise. Anyway. It's home to the Appalachian State Mountaineers. The running track was gotten rid of just last year after a major renovation that included some additional seats added to the north end zone. The stadium is nestled into the mountains surrounded by trees and has a lovely view of Howard's Knob. No, the peak over there is called Howard's Knob. Whoever the editor is is just so immature. <coughs> Me. It does look better now, but it's not like that was an issue to begin with. For those that have a thing for repeating numbers, the field is 3,333 feet above sea level. A little over a kilometer in metric. This place is so serene. Veterans Memorial Stadium, home of the Troy Trojans. A very appropriate nickname. On the surface, it looks like just another typical stadium that's common in this conference. But when you take a look at the stadium after the recent expansion, well, it just sets it apart from the rest. Not only the grand brick facade, but also the elevated seating on the inside. Something else that sets it apart is how the road is basically on the concourse, which provides a pretty decent view of the game to passing motorists. I mean, just look at that. Also, that fence looks extremely hoppable. I guess they must have security guarding it on match day because seems like it'd be quite easy to sneak in. And those were the Sunbelt College football stadiums. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, have a good one.